information is given by this optimization. And I show that this optimization uh, has a closed form expression like this, uh, one half minus the trace distance be between the scales uh, row zero and row one. They show that uh, the optimal taste uh, is given by the orthogonal projection onto the positive part of P0 times row zero minus P1 times row one. So they got this uh, nice formula for binary hypothesis testing. And uh, there's a, even a more compact uh, form to express, to express this error. Uh, I use this wedge as a non-commutative minimum. So if the, the state P0 row zero uh, commute with P1 row one, then this minimum means that we just take the, the point-wise minimum between the eigenvalues of the two operators, and then we take the sum of them. So that's a more compact uh, form. I will talk about this uh, uh, shortly. Also, uh, in 2003, there's a uh, bottling scenario uh, show some nice uh, properties for the critical measurement, which is defined, the test is defined by this, P0 times row zero, defined uh, over the, the sum of the, the operators. It's also a valid quantum measurement. And Bonner and Kernel theorem says that uh, the error on the pretty good measurement is suboptimal, but it's, n it's still pretty good in the sense that it's no larger than twice of the optimal error probability. And for proof, you can check John Waitrose's uh, book in chapter three. Uh, he used some nice uh, coaches watch inequality to show uh, this inequality, and it's known uh, for 20 years. Okay, so let me talk about this non-commutative minimum uh, because I will use this again and again in, in this talk. So we define for any positive uh, semi-definite operator A and B, I define this non-commutative minimum to be the, uh, the one of the Hermitian operator which is smaller than A in the partial order and smaller than B and we take the largest one, the, large, the, the one with the largest trace. So uh, essentially it's like a greatest, the greatest Row bound to A and B, so that's the kind of the minimum, but it's, uh, in, uh, it's used for operators. So that's why I call it a non commutative minimum. Then the Holevo Hellstrom theorem in 60s already showed that uh, this non commutative minimum is unique, so it's actually unique and has a, uh, a cross form expression. So this is a, a matrix absolute value. Then the trace of this quantity is actually corresponds to the uh, the, the optimal error in binary hypothesis testing. So we have a nice interpretation of this trace AHB to be the minimum error of discrimination between operator A and operator B. Now you can see that uh, this operator A may be like the scaled version of the, the state uh, by the prior probability and this be uh, the same thing. Okay, the, and there are some uh, basic properties of for this non-commutative Minimum. So uh, this non-commutative minimum is a uh, spatial non-commutative minimum. It's more than increasing under the state. You can see this uh, immediately from the definition, and it is monotone under positive trace preserving maps because after taking trace, then there's a trace known, and trace known is contracted under positive trace preserving map. So it's very easy to see that, and uh, it is jointly concave between the operators because. Uh, trace norm, the norm is uh, satisfied by triangle inequalities or trace distance uh, is convex. So, and there's a negation here, so uh, the whole thing is jointly concave in the operator. It's very easy to see. And it satisfies some direct sum structure. So they, they are all known uh, basic properties uh, for the non commutative minimum. And we will use uh, those properties in our proof. Okay, and in 2008, uh, there's a nice uh, upper bound for the non commutative minimum. It's called a quantum churn of bound. So we know that the left hand side uh, is uh, characterized as the minimum er error. And if the underlying uh, operators are IID, they are tensor product, then this quantity on the left hand side might not be multiplicated. However, uh, the quantum churn of bound uh, shows that the optimal error can be upper bounded by some multiplicative terms on the right hand side. So if uh, the A, uh, operator A and Bs are tensor product, are N4 tensor product, then the right hand side is multiplicative. It means that it will exponentially 
decay, or at least very, very nice, uh, uh, nice result. And later, some researchers show that the, the exponent is actually optimal, so it cannot be improved in exponent. Okay, and this in this talk, I will show a, a lower bound to this non-commutative minimum by this guy. It's like A times the non-commutative quotient uh, of B over A plus B. What does this mean? So in the commuting case, if A and B commute, then uh, we can feel the left hand side the, like minimum between the some positive scalars, small a and small b, and then this guy is like a, we call this the parallel sum, the product over the sum, and it's easy to see in the in the commuting case, so it's trivial in the commuting case. In the non-commutative scenario, if uh, operator a and b have the, the same trace, for example, a is rho, b is sigma, then uh, we just use Bonnell and Kinnear theorem. Uh, it's uh, yeah, well, it's equivalent to the Bonnell and Kinnear uh, Kinnear theorem because uh, we when we calculate the error probability under uh, critical measurement, then just by definition it's something like this. And by the cyclic property of trace uh, equal to this rho times sigma over rho plus sigma, which is exactly. Uh, smaller than two times the optimal error, where the optimal error is this uh, non commutative minimum between rho and sigma, and this one half is the equal uniform prior probability between uh, for the for rho and sigma. So you plug in and you'll see, oh, that's exactly the rho bound to this non commutative minimum. So this inequality I proved in the talk, in, in my paper, is actually an adaption of Bonnell and Kinnear theorem. And I will use that in, in my proof. Okay. So that's the basic, some pa basic properties for non-commutative minimum. Let's go to the main theorem uh, in this talk. A one-shot achievability bound. So the main theorem says that for any classical quantum channels like this, there exists an M epsilon code, meaning that we want to send capital N message and to achieve an epsilon error probability, such that for any probability distribution Px, meaning that you can use any probability, uh, any input distribution for the encoder, then this bound holds, then the epsilon will be upper bounded by this trace. Rho xb, where rho xb is the joint probability between the channel input and output. This px is the input distribution you use as this encoder, and this rho bx is the state as channel output. And this rho x, uh, the, the right hand side is the, the product of the marginal, rho x times the product of rho b, and it's capital N minus one, that's the main result. And this quantity is uh, monotonically increasing in, in the argument, so if we want to send more message capital M, then the upper bound will increase, which makes sense. Okay, so that's the main result. I will firstly show the proof and then, sh then explain the applications and the implications for this form. Okay, so for the encoding, uh, we will use the standard random coding strategy. So given each capital M, the number of messages you want to send, then we'll construct a code book by, the inc by this classical encoder, which contains a symbol code words X1, X2 to the X capital N. And for each X small M, for each code word, uh, we will choose it uh, according to some probability distribution Px, we call this the random coding. And for the random coding, we will use a pairwise independent code book, meaning meaning that XM uh, is independent of, cho is chosen independent to any other code word. And at, 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 this, uh, at this moment, you can, you can just uh, think of, uh, we, we are using uh, mutually independent uh, code books where all those uh, random variables are mutually in independent, but actually the proof works for pairwise independent code book because that's uh, more easy to implement uh, in practice. Then, given a random coding and some probability distribution, then the joint distribution between channel input and output is like this, uh, joint ZQ state. Then the marginal at the channel output is just how you trace out the input distribution, you will get the average uh, channel output. We will we will see this uh, shortly. That's the encoder. Actually, it's just a, a classical encoder uh, used by a Shannon long time. So for the decoding, we'll, we'll need to use some quantum measurements. So uh, given a realization of the code, code book, X1 to the capital XM, the corresponding channel output uh, is this. Then we use the pretty good measurement. 
with respect to those uh, channel output state. So the 